Is the Canon 18 to 135 a good lens? Let's find out. Hey guys, I'm Todd Norris and welcome back to my channel where I talk about creative photography, videography, and the gear I use. Today we're looking at the Canon EFS 18 to 135 millimeter lens. I purchased the Canon 80D Video Creator Kit which comes with this lens. Specifically, it is the Canon EFS 18 to 135 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 IS USM lens. It is the latest version of this lens. Breaking down all the acronyms, EFS stands for Electrofocus Short Back Focus. IS is Image Stabilization and USM stands for Ultrasonic Motor and that's the focusing motor inside the lens. Looking at the technical specs, we have an 18 to 135 millimeter focal length, an f-stop range of 3.5 to 5.6. It is constructed of 16 elements in 12 groups. It has a diagonal view of 74 degrees at 20 feet to 11 degrees at 30 feet. Its focus abilities consist of autofocus with a manual adjustment. Its closest focusing distance is 1.28 feet. It has a filter size of 2.6 inches or 67 millimeters in diameter. And it weighs 18.2 ounces or 515 grams. This lens is officially compatible with the following cameras. EFS lenses are manufactured specifically for Canon APS-C cameras also known as cropped sensor cameras. The focal range is listed at 18 to 135 millimeters, and on a crop sensor that equates to 28.8 to 216 millimeters due to the 1.6 crop on Canon APS-C cameras. But don't let these numbers turn you off because if you look at all the Canon EFS lenses as a whole, this lens offers one of the best zoom ranges for a variety of situations and Canon updated this lens in 2016, adding the USM focusing motor, which is virtually silent. You no longer get that plastic grinding sound when the lens is focus tracking. Looking around the lens, you'll notice a zoom lock switch, a stabilizer switch, and an auto manual focus switch. The zoom lock switch only locks it into the 18 millimeter position. Personally, I've never had to use it. The zoom ring resistance is pretty good, but I could see another benefit. So like if you're using the manual focus ring while your eye is pressed against the viewfinder, you couldn't accidentally turn the wrong ring. I also noticed air blowing in my eye in the viewfinder when zooming back out. So you'll need to make sure you keep your camera sensor clean because that suction will pull in dust. At the bottom, you'll notice some contacts and these two indentations. This is for the PZ-E1 power zoom adapter. Essentially, it attaches to the bottom of the lens and gives you a rocker switch that allows you to zoom in and out with a button press. It's sold separately from the lens, but it comes with the kit I purchased. I think I used it once. It was pretty cool because you could remotely zoom with the Canon phone app but I never found a use for it. I eventually just took it out of my bag to make room for other lenses. While the construction is mostly plastic, it does have a metal flange on the back and it feels solid. It's not too heavy or big, especially considering this is a zoom lens. Let's slap this baby on the ADD and take it for a spin.
I'm shooting outside this morning and I'm between some rain showers so it's overcast. There's no direct sun. I'm also shooting freehand so no tripod. All the photos and videos I'll be showing you are straight off the camera without any color grading. The cool thing about this lens is its versatility. You can get up close with the 18 millimeters or reach something far away, zooming to 135 millimeters. Here's a shot I took at 18 millimeters. Now I'll zoom in all the way to 135. That tree is about 40 to 45 yards away, so it's not too bad. It's not crazy long, but enough for most situations. Here's another one of this oak. Now I'll zoom all the way in. The color's looking good. I'm noticing some vignetting at the 18 millimeter range, but it's not too bad. And it's almost gone at 135. Here I was trying to see how close I could get to a subject. I was surprised at the amount of bokeh in the background of these shots. The closest focusing distance is 1.28 feet. That's 16 inches, which doesn't work for macro, but with the zoom, I was able to get some decent close-ups. I decided to pop on my Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8 for some comparison shots, and I was really surprised at how well the EFS lens performed. In fact, in a lot of situations, it smacked down the Sigma. The EFS lens also has 100 millimeters more of zoom than the Sigma. It also costs a lot less and is smaller and lighter. I couldn't believe it, so I decided to do some low light test. I thought for sure the Sigma would win with the f1.8 aperture. Here is the Canon EFS shot. And here is the Sigma. While the Sigma has a lower f-stop of 1.8, the EFS lens has image stabilization. Remember, I'm freehanding these shots. I was able to slow down the shutter speed to pick up more light with the Canon lens without any motion blur. I was so impressed, I decided to see how far I could push the EFS before I started noticing some blur. A shutter speed of 1 over 10, 1 over 3, 1 second, I'm noticing some blur here. And at five seconds, it's completely hosed, but damn, that's impressive. Now I understand why Canon insists on putting image stabilization in the lens rather than on the sensor. Because of the way IS is implemented into the lens, it didn't matter if I was zoomed in or out. At a shutter speed of one over three, I was still able to get a clean shot hand holding the camera and zoomed in. I also noticed that since I had to use the lowest aperture of f1.8 on the Sigma to get my exposure right, the shot wasn't as crisp as the EFS lens. I got a shallow depth of field, which was not what I wanted. Image stabilization works for video too. Here I'm walking over some uneven ground and I'm holding the camera by its grip. I'm purposely not trying to stabilize it myself. This is with it turned off. This is with it turned on. It works okay. I could see if I had both hands on the camera trying to smooth the shot out myself, it would have been better, you know, like a cinematic pan. This could work for an event video shooting like a wedding, but I wouldn't recommend this lens for vlogging. The only bad experience I've had with this lens so far was a shot that I took that was underexposed. I was at a park where I was standing on some rocks trying to get a shot of me with the sky in the background. It was almost dusk, so I thought the light would be cool, but it came out way underexposed. When I went to increase the exposure of the raw image in post, I got some pretty bad chromatic aberration. You can see it here in these cropped images. These purple lines where there's extreme contrast of light and dark. I haven't had any issues since then, and of course, this was my fault for trying to salvage an image that was three stops underexposed. I should have bracketed this shot. Here's some more shots I've taken with the EFS 18-135. to 
I've applied some simple color curves to these images. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your support. You can also follow me on Instagram at I am Todd Norris, or you can send me a friend request on Facebook. Until next time, I am Todd Norris. Peace out.